Hi everyone, I'm Oliver from Lenses.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to create a Super 8 or old film effect in Blender. It will involve some color correction to make the film or the movie that we are playing look old and also we are going to use uh, particles and some interesting techniques to automate animations to create the film grain on top of the movie to achieve that aging effect uh, in the film. Okay, uh, then after all that we are going to go through a pretty extensive uh, compositing stage because this tutorial is almost everything compositing about compositing so I hope you enjoyed and let's go for it so we have plenty of things to do here so I will start by creating the noise effect the film grain so I will delete the cube as always <laughs> press 1 in the number to go to the uh, front view and shift A add a plane here we have our plane now this camera, I want to press Alt-G and Alt-R to reset the uh, position and rotation. Now I press R-X to rotate the camera 90 degrees. I press uh, 90 in the keyboard. There we go. And now I just drag it in the Y-axis so it's looking uh, <clears throat> forward to the plane. Now I will press 0 in the numpad so I can see the plane uh, from the camera and what I want to do is to scale the plane till it fits the measures of the camera something like this right so the width and height are similar to the camera view the camera uh, let's make sure here in the render panel that is uh, you know 1280 by 720 which is the resolution I want for the final video so what we are going to do uh, to use this plane for is for creating uh, you know the film grain using particles um, but for that what I'm gonna do is to create let's press set uh, to just uh, see the wireframe and I will create a circle here right here we have a circle and you need to make sure that the field type here is in triangle fan or angon right because otherwise it will only be the wireframe uh, and you won't have a solid circle, right, with, uh, you know, with a fill, which is exactly what we need, because this uh, circle is what I'm going to use for creating the film grain. Um, of course, the film grain is not always the same. It's not completely circular. It's like, you know, some kind of shapes, um, you know, noisy shapes. I will create some of them now, but first I'm going to create the particle system for the plane, so you can check out how this is going to work. So let's go to the particle system, let's create a new one, and let's call this small grain. The reason why I'm calling this uh, small is because we are going to have uh, three different particle systems here in this plane. So I will have a lot of small grain, uh, a few medium grain, and only a couple of ones, uh, you know, with a really big grain. Okay, so, you know, the small grain will be constant while the other ones will be not so much constant, but they will be there. Um, okay, uh, so let's just press Alt-A, and this is what's happening, all right? The particles are, uh, you know, are being born, and they fall down because of the physics and stuff like that. Uh, first, what I want to do is to just reduce the lifetime from 50 to 1, okay? or maybe what I can do before, so you can see the, the effect it has, is to go to the physics panel and just put it on no. I don't want physics, uh, okay? All right, um, so now I can go here and the lifetime, instead of 50, so the particle is born and it stay there uh, for 50 uh, frames, I want it to just <clears throat> be there for one single frame. And this is looking something like a noise pattern. Let me increase this a lot, like probably, uh, well, first, uh, we need to define the amount of frames that we want to use it. So in this case, it will be uh, 250. So make sure that the end frame is 250. So there are particles uh, in all the duration of the video, right? Because the number of particles that we want to put in depends on the length of the video right more particles but more length is less particles per frame so we need to control that so let's try with maybe 200,000 this is looks like a lot so let's maybe try with something less okay I think this is looking pretty good 
And now what I want to do is the, the particles to be uh, representing this shape. So I'm going to the render panel right here and let's pick an object and this object I will pick circle. So here as you can see we are creating circles but the circles they are not being oriented in the right way. Now I'm going to put the circle outside of the of the view so it doesn't interrupt us when we look at the plane from the camera and what I want to do is to enter in the edit mode select everything with A press R and rotate it uh, maybe this way 90 right 90 degrees just to make sure that it's looking to the camera and it's not still looking to the camera let's rotate it again something like this okay now as you can see the all the circles are um, looking to the camera okay what I want to do now is to as I said just place it something like here so we can easily check it out so what I want to do is to duplicate this a couple of times right you can make it uh, you know all the times you want but for me for for this tutorial it's uh, enough so I will go in here and activate uh, you know activate the proportional editing so I can just go ahead and uh, change the circular shape to make it more you know natural let's select another one So change the shape, select the other one, and let's also just give it some different shapes. And finally, the last one. Now, what I want to do is to select all these four uh, circles with uh, shift and left and right click, sorry, and press Control G to create a group. And this group is uh, going to be called grain. Probably this, this name remained here from the from a previous test I did. So yeah, uh, grain, call it grain. And now as you can see, the particles here are looking like one of the circles. But we want uh, the particle system to pick randomly one of these four. So there is more variation into it. So instead of objects, I will pick a group and let's let the grain. So now it looks more natural. Let's say here, pick random, and there we go. They are looking to the to the camera. Just make sure. There we go. Okay. Now, a last step I want to I want to do is to just uh, deactivate here the emitter. All right. So when we render, only the particles are rendered and not the plane. Otherwise, as the particles are in the same place as, as the as the emitter, because they are not moving. Um, they will have some problems to be rendered, all right? So I want the back to be transparent so we can um, select a color for the background. All right, so now we have this. We can go here to physics or we can also change it here from the, from the render panel uh, and we can change the size and the random size. So let's pick the size, uh, make it very small, something like this, but let's increase the random size so some of the particles are bigger than the other ones. Right, this is some kind of randomness, and as you can see, some of them are smaller, while other ones are a little bigger. So this looks uh, pretty good to me. So as you can see, we have here a pretty cool noise pattern. Now, as I told you, we are going to create another two uh, particle systems. And uh, okay, what what I will use is these settings. All right, the particle settings. I will call these ones small okay the reason why why I use this is when you create a new particle system it creates uh, default settings uh, with the default uh, settings of blender for the particle systems you know and we don't want that we already set this uh, system up and the other ones are basically the same we only need to change the size and the amount of particles so uh, I can use these same uh, settings and just tweak them a little bit so let's create another particle system let's call it medium grain there we go and from here uh, let's just go to the list and pick small of course we don't want the small ones and now if we change the values here we will change all as well the small grain particle system settings because they are picking the same settings so what I want to do is to go here to these two which represents the number of objects 
that are using uh, these uh, settings. In this case, is the medium grain and the small grain particle systems. So I need to click here. So now this one is unique. Instead of small, it's a small dot zero zero one. So now I can call this one medium. Okay. And now I can just change it without affecting the, the small grain uh, particles. So let's go here and let's add probably like 1000, right? As you can see, a lot less than the small grain and we can increase the size. So let's check it out. So as you can see now, uh, sometimes there are some bigger grain. Let's make it a lot bigger so you can see it better. There you can see it, all right? But that is too much. So this way is some, you know, some bigger grains around. So they give a lot of uh, more variation. And now we need to go ahead and add the bigger ones. For that, I create another particle system. This will be called big grain. And for the settings, I pick the medium one. I press in the two to make it unique and let's call it big. Okay, and now the number, instead of 1000, let's make this really, really low, like 50. So it's 50 big grains, um, you know, into 250 frames. So in some frames, there won't be any of them, but this is what we want. We just want a, a, a few of them appearing from time to time to give more variation. So let's just make this bigger um, here in the physics panel. There is no, nothing in this frame. So as you can see from time to time, uh, some of them appear. A lot of random size. Make it a little smaller. And I don't know if you can see it, but in the final result, they will show up. Okay, as you can see also, the frames per second are now not real time, right? Because we have a lot of particles, so Blender can't uh, reproduce it in, in, in full real time. It's just 10 frames per second. Right, when the numbers here are red, is that you are not seeing in real time. So you need to be careful with that because in the final result, this will look a lot faster. Okay, but this is what we want because actually the film grain is different in each frame of the movie. So this is what we want. Now I'm going to select this plane, okay, with the particles and press M in the keyboard and send it to the second layer. All right, so now in the first layer, we can work on the vertical lines that are moving randomly. Um, this is because later, in the when we make the final render, you will see that we create we will create uh, several render uh, render layers. So you know we can render separately the film grain for the ver and, and the vertical lines because then we will mix them together in the compositing. So let's start working on the lines. So let's create a plane. Let's make it really really uh, very low thickness. Scale it like this, okay. And um, what I want to do with this is to make it move randomly. So what I want to do is to come to the first frame. It doesn't matter if it's the first frame actually, but I prefer to go to the first frame and add a location um, location key uh, keyframe. Uh, keep in mind that I'm not adding a lock rod scale or uh, I don't. I, I only adding a location keyframe. The reason is that because uh, you know later I will come back and probably rearrange the the, the thickness of it like this to make some of them um, bigger than the other ones. So uh, if we have some keyframe in the in the in the scale as well, it will be a problem, right? We will need to tweak the curves and and uh, that takes more time. So let's press T here to to hide that. And let's go to the graph editor. Okay, and here we have the location. We want it to move in the X location not only, not in the Y or Z, only in the X location. So I select the X location. I press N to show the properties of this one. And I can add a modifier and add a noise modifier. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, this is moving randomly already, but this is uh, you know, very fast and, and not too uh, big movement. So we want something more like this and with bigger movements. All right, something like this is probably okay. Scale it so it's uh, slower, a little slower. 
Alright. And now what I want to do is to add another noise modifier. And so what this will do is to, on top of that curve, it's going to add some, some noisy movement. I don't know if you can see it here, but it has some noisy movement and that's what we want. Probably not that much. 0.1, maybe 0.1 is enough. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is cool. Okay, now I want to show you two different things of duplicating this because look at what happens. If I press Shift D and I move it in the x-axis, this is what will happen. They will join together because the animation is in the same position, right? So we have two ways to uh, you know uh, make them in a put them in a different position. Uh, the first the first way is to go here, select the keyframe. Let's go here and make sure that I can only select uh, keyframes in the curve that I have selected. So this is great. And I can press G, Y, and just, you know, move the keyframe. So the curve will be in a different place, allowing us to place exactly. Now, the problem of this is that, as you can see, the two lines are moving the same way. This is because the noise is the same. So, so what we can do is to change the face here and change as well the face here. And this face will change the seed. Let's say that is the seed of the curve. So as you can see now, the movement is different, right? And this is what we can do. Now, there is another way, and is that we just... Um, well, not duplicated. Let's uh, let's let let's create an empty plane axis, maybe, and let's add, you know, select the the, the plane before, then select the uh, the empty. Press Control P and set a parent. Now, if we duplicate both of them, they will keep the distance because you know now this parent controls the position of that line. Okay, of course, the movement is still being the same. Is this one? So let's move the face. Let's move the face here as well. So you can, so we can change it. So, you know, also we can, uh, for this one, for example, we can reduce the scale or maybe the strength. So the movement is not that big. Right, so we have some difference between the, the different lines. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this one. And, uh, well, I think that it's faster to just move the curve here. I just wanted to show you how to move something that uh, has been animated, okay? You can just set a parent and move the parent. So the, the object will keep its animation, but will follow the position of the parent and also the, the rotation. So here, let's move the, the face. Let's move this face as well. Move it up a little. Okay. And well, you can do this all the times you want. Okay, let's select another one. I don't want to do this a lot of times because this will get boring. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the more lines we have, the more kind of realistic it will get. So we can probably even reduce the scaling here. So this is more sticking to, to, a, to a location, more than the others that are moving a lot. And um, yeah, so I think that for the tutorial, this uh, couple of lines is enough. And now you can, uh, you know how to add more of them uh, to make it look better. Now, what I want to do is to make some of them be a little, uh, you know, a little thicker and another ones to be really, have a really low thickness. Okay, and now we need to make sure that all of this is in the main layer. So we have uh, in the first layer, in the second layer, we have the noise, the film grain, and in the first layer, we have the vertical lines. 
So this is perfect. So now it's time to go to the compositing, then we come back here later when we are ready to just uh, create the noise effect for the compositor. But for now, I will go to the node editor. And uh, what I will do is to press Shift A. Well, not actually, not actually, because we still have to load the movie. Let's uh, select here, use notes and activate the backdrop so we can see what we are doing in the, back, in the background of this uh, window. And um, what I'm gonna do is to press Shift A, Input and Movie Clip because we are going to import the video. Now we could go here to Open and just uh, select it from the file, from the file's uh, system of the uh, of the OS of my computer. But what I want to do is to go here to the Movie Clip Editor and just drag and drop it from the OS. So we already have it here, and uh, here you have an example. So this is the video that we are going to, to be working on, okay? There are several things that we have to do with this video. And it's, um, you know, now we have it loaded here. I can just go here to the drop-down list and pick it up. So we already have it in, uh, in the compositor. So what I'm going to do is to press Ctrl-Shift-A and start with the color correction of this. Okay, the color correction. So for the color correction, we can start by adding some curves at the beginning. With these curves, we can make it a little darker. Okay, keep in mind that this makes it brighter, this makes it darker. And uh, also, uh, let's say that I think I'm going to go for a yellowish tone because, you know, I checked uh, uh, several references of Super 8 film and uh, I guess it depends on uh, how the, the artist worked with the negatives and all this stuff. Um, the image looks different, all right? I've seen like some kind of reddish tones ones. Uh, some other has a greenish tones. I think I, I'm going to go for a yellowish uh, tinting. So let's go here to the blue and just reduce the blue, the blue a little and probably decrease the greenish as well. Or maybe increase them a little bit and decrease the, or increase the red tones. Okay, something like this. So let's see the before and after. Before, after. So now this looks uh, more yellow or orangey-like. Uh, now, on top of this, I want to mix this, all right? And I want to mix this with a yellowish tone, something like this. Okay, and now I can reduce the, the, the factor. This is just for tinting the image a little bit. Okay, let's just press V in the keyboard. You can press V and Alt V to zoom in or zoom out in the backdrop. All right, so this is looking uh, it's looking pretty good to me. Let's increase it a little bit. All right, yeah, something like this. Let's try to change the color to see if it, it gets better. So what this does basically is to take the black uh, colors and uh, instead of black, a complete black, now they have a part of yellowish, all right? So that is what I wanted. Now I will try to just mix this image with itself in multiply mode. So as you can see, this will increase a lot the black uh, colors. So I can play here with the uh, multiply mode and this will um, change the amount of, you know, I can actually go ahead and increase the tinting and instead of mixing these two guys, I can mix it with the original one to see the difference and how it looks. All right there is there is a lot of ways you can you can make this kind of tinting. All right now another thing that I want to do uh, after I have um, just make the tinting and and the color correction, I I could keep uh, make a lot of color corrections. Okay, depending on what you want to achieve. But uh, what I'm gonna do here is to um, uh, let me let me think let me think a little um, pum, 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 pum. add a glow effect yeah I'm sorry there are a lot of steps here and <laughs> I just had to check out the next one so I can add a glare okay and this one's I I wanna add a fog glow and actually decrease the threshold 
So as you can see, this will make the, the brightest part to be brighter and affect uh, the surroundings. Okay, so this is uh, exactly what I want. We can put it in high. Okay, so it has more quality. But uh, as this takes uh, some kind of, you know, pretty much uh, resources of the computer when compositing, and it can take some time uh, to make the, to, to show up the, sh the changes, what I will do is to press M to mute this, uh, uh, this uh, node for now. All right, I will unmute it in the end or uh, at, at some steps just to check how it's looking. But uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, and now on top of all this, I want to blur this out. The reason is that, you know, old film didn't have so much quality. So we will fake the, the you know, there is not so high resolution because this one has pretty good resolution, right? So what I want to do is to make it look a little blurish. So uh, we don't feel like it has a lot of resolution. All right. Now I will take this uh, to here. And uh, I will do something here, which is just press shift, left click, drag, and here we have a reroute node. Okay, so we can take this from here, exactly. So now later we will add some node here and uh, I want to make some space for it. And this way uh, we will add a node and it will affect all the, the, the nodes that is connected to. We don't have to reconnect stuff later. So we can just create here a new tree. All right, so I will just make some space and later uh, I will show you what we are going to do with this. So let's see how all this looked like. Okay, so this is already looking like a little old photo. Okay, now we want to add the noise on top of it, the film grain and the vertical lines. Let's see how to do it. First, we need to set up the render layers. So let's go here and, uh, uh, you know, until several months ago, the render layers were inside the render panel, but now, as it's a pretty important panel, it has its own pattern. So we have now this, uh, you know, this render layers panel. So we have this one. Um, this will be the film grain. Film grain, and we are going to create a new one, and let's call it vertical lines. That's it. So now, in vertical lines, we need to make sure in the 3D view which uh, layer it is. So here we have the second layer is the noise, the film grain, and the first layer we have the vertical lines. So now the vertical lines will only render the first layer and um, film grain will render the second layer. Keep in mind that here in this, uh, in this, rectangle, in this uh, 20 layers here, we define the layers that are rendered in each different render layer, but here we define the, the layers that are active in the scene. So if we have here, for example, uh, the these uh, scene layers right like they are right now, uh, in the film grain, we won't be rendered uh, anything because this layer is being hidden, like here, okay? So we need to activate it here. Just cl uh, click uh, Shift and left click uh, to activate or deactivate more than one layer at a time. Okay. So uh, now we have these two uh, layers active and we have the film grain and the vertical lines. That's fine. Okay, now another thing I wanna do is to go ahead to the world panel and put the horizon color in white. And let's take a, a, a test render to see how this looks like. Okay, so this is exactly what I want. As you can see, it's like kind of, uh, some kind of uh, splattered paint. <laughs> So uh, we want this for the grain. Um, let's check the other one. Here is the composite. Uh, so film grain, and here we have the vertical lines. Okay, this is uh, exactly what I want. All right, all right. So now we can go ahead to the compositor and just mix them up. So we have here and layers. I'm going to cut this with Control left click drag. Okay, duplicate this one. And here we have the film grain. Let's check it. And in this one, I'm going to set it to the vertical lines. So here we have the two of them. Now we need to mix them. So I'm going to uh, create a color mix node. There we go. Add this on top. 
and put it on multiply mode. Uh, the reason why I added the white color in the background is that now we can mix all this in, uh, in a multiply mode and only the black areas will be visible on top of the other layer, all right? So uh, now this way we can mix all this. So what I wanna do is to actually duplicate this mix and instead of multiply, set just a mix. And here, what I wanna do is to mix this, uh, this layer with a white color to make it not that, uh, you know, not that black. So it's a little, uh, a little brighter. And um, with this one, as we have it in the multiply mode, uh, you know, we can just decrease this amount. Well, we can just switch these ones, sadly. So the, so the vertical lines are in the top so we can define its opacity here. Okay, now we need to create some kind of vignette effect and for that I'm going to create another mix one and let's go ahead and uh, mix it with black, black color. And let's go here and create a matte and box mask. This box mask, ma this box mask <laughs> sorry, uh, should be covering almost all the view. So let's just increase this, like this, and like this. Okay. There we go. Now, this is what we have. Okay, so this is kind of what we want, but if we go here, we will see probably the, the, the opposite result. So what I will do is to just go here to color, invert, and invert this mask. So now we have a black border surrounding the, the whole frame. What I, what I wanna do is to just distort it a little bit with the lens distortion node. Just select these couple nodes and move them a little to give more space here because I think we need to add another node there. Yeah, indeed, we need to add it. So here I can distort it, all right? And uh, so this way we have some kind of a shape of an old television or something like this. And um, what I wanna do is to activate here the feed option. So when we distort it, uh, we see the black area covering all the screen. And what we can do to, to fix this, uh, this thing is to just you know, increase a little the distortion like that and go here and decrease the size of it. Also decrease it in the in height. Okay, something like that. Now I need to add a blur effect on it. And let's try with 20 and 20. Let's try with even more. Well, even more. Now just decrease a little bit the size again. Right, so we get that kind of vignette, okay. So as you can see, here again, we have this vignette effect, but uh, this is in uh, actually in multiply mode. So only the black areas are added to the, to the image. And what I want to do is to make again, do again what I did with the with the other layers. Mix this with a white color, all right, and just reduce it to zero. In zero, we have all the effect from the box mask. And here, if we increase it, we can decrease a little its effect. Well, actually, that's not true. We need to make it black. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because we need to change the box, uh, all right, the, we need to change the, um, the opacity of everything because we are mixing it with uh, the factor, all right? So we are using this image as an alpha. So the more black we have, the less, uh, the less opacity we'll have here. So yeah, we need to check this out. Let's put it on zero for now. But it's uh, even if we have it on zero, it's good to have this uh, this mix node here because uh, later when we add it to the image and we can see uh, how it's going on, 
um, we can go ahead and uh, modify stuff, you know, the opacity of every layer in the compositing node, which is something uh, interesting. Okay, now we have all this. I think it's time to just go ahead and mix it with the original image. But before, I want to add another effect to this image. So in a lot of videos uh, that I've seen from uh, Super 8 footage or photos, I can see that, uh, you know, some of the, some parts of the image are being burned. And uh, as I could, uh, you know, read in the internet, uh, in some places, it's, uh, it's an effect produced by the, you know, the, the paper in which the photo is being printed uh, gets burned, uh, burns the image with the, the time, you know, with the aging. So I want to achieve that effect with this image. Uh, what I will do is to add a color mix. I'm adding a lot of color mixes. <laughs> and uh, what I need to do is to create some uh, ellipse masks. Okay, I will actually create two of them. So stay tuned. Uh, da, da, da. Here it goes. Here it goes. Make it a little bigger, something like this. Okay. And now I just want to duplicate this. Actually, I think we can move it uh, to the bottom to have more space to this to do this. And um, yeah, we duplicated it. So now this one, uh, I will move it to the other side, something like this, and maybe more to the top. So it's not exactly the same. You can do it wherever you want in the image, right? I just in this case, I just wanted to add it uh, in the in the borders. So we have this, uh, what we need to do is to duplicate this mix node, or you can create a new one. Mix these two guys with, uh, I don't know, maybe a nod mode. Uh, so this way we have the two uh, masks in the same image. Um, let's just move this one a little to the bottom, something like this, okay. Okay, let's rotate it a little bit. This is also to show you how to work a little with masks. They are really, really useful for this kind of stuff. Or, you know, uh, when you have to do some color correction, uh, they help a lot to mask some uh, parts of the scene that you don't want to be co correcting. So uh, it helps a lot. All right, so we have this mask. And now I will add a filter blur. There we go. And let's increase this like a lot. Even more. Okay, something like this could work. So let's plug it into the factor of this mask. And uh, as always, we can, we can go ahead and add another color mix and mix this with black. All right, remember that this is uh, some kind of an alpha channel for the for this mix node. So the more black we have in the image, the less we will see the uh, this burnt area. And actually you can use it in two different ways. You can just uh, change the factor here. All right, here we have the mask. So here we have the factor with zero, we have the full mask. With one, we have it uh, in, in black, okay? So, but you can also do it, if you keep this on one, you can also change this color, all right? If you put it on white, you will get a complete white, of course, all right? So uh, yeah, we can change the color or we can change the, the factor, okay? So in this case, um, yeah, I'm going to give it just a little bit of blackiness, blackiness. <laughs> so we press Control Shift, and uh, left click in this one to see the result. And let's uh, change the color to put it something like yellowish or something like that, or reddish. And let's add, let's put it on add mode and let's try how it looks. All right, doesn't look really good. Let's try it with screen. It's taking a long time to render and I guess it's because of the glare uh, fed, so let's mute it with pressing M. So this now should be should, should work faster. So let's try in several modes like uh, burn. No, this is too much. Maybe dodge. Oh, 
I like, I kind of like this one. Uh, let's try another one. Color, no. Saturation, no. Uh, overlay, well, this could work. This could work. Let's make it a little brighter. I think Dutch looks a little better, yeah. Okay, so this is kind of the effect that I've seen in some images. Uh, now, the thing is that we probably should make it a little slightly, all right, something like that. So this is kind of being burnt, okay? Of course, we could do it a, a lot more exaggerated, like almost white, but uh, I just want a subtle effect. And now we need to mix this with the film grain and all that stuff. So again, another mix note, of course. <laughs> what were you was expecting? And uh, we put this on top in the mix node. And now instead of mix, we add a multiply mode. So we get something like this. Now we can play with the factor. We can as well play with the blurriness of this uh, of these effects. For this, for example, this line, these lines, these vertical lines could be a little blurred, just a little, something like that, and uh, the same applies to the noise. Let's put it here, so it's a little more. Something like that, for example. All right, so this is just, uh, you know, a test. I, I don't expect to, to get a perfect effect here because, you know, in the examples I did, and uh, if I want to get a very real realistic one, I can spend hours uh, just tweaking some uh, parameters and in, even in the particles and going back and forth. But in the tutorial, I just want to show you the, 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 the workflow and how it gets done. So you can then tweak it as you want. Uh, for your project. So I think this looks already pretty nice. So only one thing is missing and is the flickering effect. And I will show you uh, how I uh, achieved it. And it's something that will make the video just flicker a little uh, left and right and up and, uh, and down. And also the, the vignette effect and um, the opacity of this, uh, of this vertical lines. Okay, so this will give a lot of life to, to our final scene. So let's see how to do it. Um, first of all, I will just uh, hide this panel, right, to have more space in the screen. And I will go out from the um, full screen view. So now I can go ahead and in this panel, in this area, let's open a graph editor. The reason why I open in the graph editor is because the that flickering effect I'm going to generate it automatically uh, here in the graph editor as, as we just as we did with the vertical lines, okay? But we are going to do it with notes. Uh, let's see how to do it. So let's let's check. Okay, let's start with the vignette effect. Um, let's actually press it like this to show the, the full image here. And um, what I want to do is to affect the X and Y position of the box mask. So let's press Y, uh, uh, sorry, I in the, in the, um, with the cursor on top of that parameter, and that will generate uh, a keyframe. Okay, so now I need to select this node, and when I select it, here it will show up. And uh, here now we have the options for the X and Y box, box mask, mask position. So, uh, with this selected, I can press N, go ahead, add a modifier, noise, and there we are. So let's see what we have here. As you can see, this is way too much because the box is moving a lot. All right, so we need to decrease it. Uh, there's no problem with that. We just decrease the strength a lot, something like this. And let's see what we have then. So now it's moving, but it's not moving really too much, but still quite, uh, so let's put it on half. Uh, 0 0.014, uh, this uh, should look good. Okay, and now let's just copy this 
and paste it in the Y uh, position. So uh, we have this here, just move the face, you know, as we did with the lines. So the movement in, in Y doesn't correspond with the movement on X because uh, if that happens, uh, you can try. It looks kind of unnatural, you know, because it's like moving diagonally or something like that. So uh, that's it. Okay, so we already have the flickering vignette effect. Now, uh, we also need to change, I also want to change the opacity of the uh, vertical line. So we go here, all right, and I want to change this factor. So let's press Y, I in the keyboard. Let's select this multiply mode. And we add another noise modifier and let's see, okay, if the, if we zoom in a little, we can see that this is going to jump from uh, around 1 or 1 1.2 and 0 0.4. This is probably too much, so let's just decrease it a little. So it jumps something like this and I want the maximum to be 1, okay, and the minimum is kind of 0 0.6, okay. So this uh, should look good. Let's uh, let's try. Okay, this is actually it's jumping, but but it's uh it's very little. The effect is very little. So let's increase the strength and move this down. So the maximum is always one. There we go. Let's see now. Yeah, okay, now it's more visible. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's okay like that. Okay, let's go for the last step of the tutorial, which is make the video flickering effect. So for that, uh, before we added some space here to add a couple of notes, uh, the first note that we need to add is the distort node translate. There we go. Now with this translate node, we are going to move this video. But uh, let me show you what happens. If we move this like this, the video will just uh, go ahead. But then when we mix it with other stuff, okay, you can see how all the rest of the elements are moving with it because, uh, you know, it's like we are moving the entire base of the video. Right, so this is not exactly what we want. Uh, first, what I'm gonna do is to just add with I in the in the keyboard uh, with the cursor over the parameters, add key keyframes in the X and Y um, parameters of the translate uh, node. Now I select the translate node, and this is uh, what we have. Okay, somehow this already has some noise. Uh, some noise modifiers, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter because uh, we already saw how to add them, okay? So just uh, make sure that the that the noise modifier goes from one to minus one or, you know, maybe two or three. Let's actually increase them a little bit. Maybe around that. And let's go to the other one and maybe around that, okay? So this will move like uh, between uh, four and five pixels uh, per frame. Okay, so that will be enough to add that flickering effect. Now, what we need to do is to crop the image so it's flickering, but it doesn't uh, create the base of the video. You know, it's uh, it will move all the base of the video. So then, when you reproduce it uh, uh, after rendering it, uh, it will look like uh, there is no flickering at all. So what I'm gonna do is to actually add a distort crop modifier. Now we don't see anything, so we need to start increasing the left and up. And you can see that we are already showing up the bottom left part of the video. So let's write down the resolution of the video, which is uh, 1280 and in up 720. Okay, if you start uh, cutting from here, you will uh, you know, cut some parts of the video, but that's not what we want. We want to see the whole video. Now, the thing is that if we start uh, changing from frame to frame, yeah, I can feel how the video is flickering, right? 
Of course, I don't want to happen uh, something like, uh, you know, in the borders of the video, there is some part without any video at all. So what I'm going to do to prevent that is it, going, it, it is going to be a very, very little part of the video, just a couple of frames. So uh, what I'm going to do is to add a mix node. Let's go ahead uh, with a uh, da, 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 color mix. Okay. And I'm going to mix the translated image, image with the normal one. There we go. So now, uh, just to show you, if I move this like uh, 16 frames behind it, we are going to see the other bit. Well, sorry, sorry. We just need to mix them like this. And something a little weird is happening here. Okay, this is a mix node. Uh, we probably need to to do it on mix, but we need to activate here the alpha the alpha uh, channel. Okay, so when this video goes up, the transparent part that leave leave uh, behind, it will show up the background video. Okay, so make sure that the original video is in the background and the translated one, the one with the flickering, is on top of it. All right, and the mix node you just apply the alpha channel. So it uses the alpha channel to uh, decide where it shows the video. So as you can see, now if it goes like uh, a few frames to the left or to the right, up and down, uh, we don't, we won't see any transparent part or, or anything. We're just going to see the, the original video behind it. And as it's only a couple of frames, it will work uh, as expected. Okay, so now I can just uh, go ahead and as we didn't save the the keyframes, it's already in its original position. All right, so this is exactly what I wanted. Now, the last step uh, is to activate here, reactivate the fog glow. And after that, we need to make sure that we are going here and we need to plug this into the composite channel. But before, I think I'm going to add another uh, little color correction, All right? So maybe I want this to be something like this, a little orange and uh, just reduce it a lot. Zero, reduce it just a little bit. Okay, so point 0.1 is already too much, so point 0 0.5, let's see how it looks like. Hmm, even less. Okay, something like this to make it more, you know, brighter. All right, so now I need to just uh, plug this into the composite node. And uh, well, this is already done. So as I already said, uh, I think a couple of times <laughs> during the tutorial, uh, probably because this one has been uh, pretty difficult to record because I had several, uh, you know, technical issues and I had to record it uh, several times. <laughs> so probably I repeated some uh, some stuff. But, um, you know, mainly this is uh, to show you some techniques you can use uh, uh, creatively to uh, create some effects that are not supposed to be done with Blender, but you can do them. Uh, of course you can. So, um, so yeah, I, I wanted to show you the some interesting things like, uh, you know, creating film grain with uh, particles or... Um, you know, the vertical lines, uh, automatic movement, movement, the flickering effects in the nodes. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, it, it was pretty interesting. And, um, and yeah, so now you know the technique, so you can improve it a lot and you can work, work on it because, you know, uh, as I said, I think, um, yeah, uh, this is for the tutorial. I don't know how much uh, it, it is going to... to to last probably one hour or even less or probably more. But um, the, the, the important part is that you get the technique. So then you can spend like four hours and get a really, really, really cool result and, uh, you know, more realistic or, uh, you know, or even tweak it to get some different super aid, uh, you know, effect like uh, more reddish or with another color with a better film grain, whatever you can now uh, improve my technique and uh, work, work with it or you know, I hope that at least you learn how to do something that you didn't uh, know how to do before. And uh, with that, I'm already happy. <laughs> so, okay, guys, um, see you on the next tutorial and happy blending.